yeah, sometimes I just come in here and stare at them while they dry. I know, I know it's weird. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is my best-selling product. These are the rest of my products. And this is Jess Paul. Now that everybody's taking me completely seriously, let me give you all advice. <laughs> I made a related video at the beginning of my channel last year that went into more of the intricacies of how to sell more of your art. So if you actually do already have an Etsy store and you want to get into how you can make your art go farther and get a bit more of that cash from your creativity, then you can uh, right click, open a new tab and watch that one after this one. This is for all you guys and gals who are toying with the idea of opening an Etsy shop, but have no idea how much time and resources it might require. So I'm going to go through all the steps of what you would do as an Etsy shop seller in order to have not only an Etsy shop, but a successful Etsy shop, if I do say so myself. To specify, I do not make a full-time income from my Etsy shop, but it's a nice amount of pocket change. And I found myself into a very specific niche that has really put me on the map of this specific kind of craft. I'm, I'm literally one of the only of these specific kinds of craft. So let's start with the thing that seems most obvious as the responsibility that you're going to have having a shop, and that's creating a product. After you have chosen your craft, your art form, now it is time to figure out the cost of making this product at all. That's how you start a shop. That's how you price your products and know that you're getting a good amount of profit now. I feel like I'm probably going to be relatable to a lot of the artists out there. At the same time, this is the subject that I feel most insecure about, most like an idiot, and it's money. More so, math. One thing that you guys might or might not have gathered from me, I hate math. Like, when it comes to dealing with numbers, looking at math, looking at spreadsheets, calculating things, I try to avoid it at all costs. I have paid other people hundreds of dollars to figure out math for me because I literally want, I, ju I just, so when I realized this year that some of my calculations were a little off, I wanted to kick myself. This was the first season, and you might hear me say season a lot, that I really was able to truncate and see an overview of how long my product creation took me at the scale that it, it is at now. And I realized that I was severely undercharging my products. If you guys watch my Vlogmas, if you haven't, it still exists. You have watched my entire journey. I, I was making my donuts from scratch for two weeks if not more, because I was in a truncated amount of time. I had deadlines. I had a start date of when I landed the plane to come home and when I uh, had Christmas Eve, because that's when Vlogmas ended, that I had sewn 500 donuts. Not decorated, not decorated, but, but so. And throughout my Christmas vacation, I was spending at least eight hours per day every other day to do these donuts because I was trying to get it done as fast as possible and it wasn't going fast enough. Thankfully for me, this is the last batch that I'm going to be doing in that way, so I'm never going to have to spend that much of my time again, but it was very harrowing to think about how I kind of compared the day job that I used to have. I spent the same amount of time and then figured out the overall profit of what I would make off of all the things in front of me. And it wasn't good. <laughs> but for all you artists out there who are not going to make the same mistake I did, I'm going to give you a pretty simple equation to figure out your initial costs. So basically, go to your craft store and get a season's worth of supplies. Since I started my shop, it was kind of in my head to organize my creation batches by season. Or in my head, Halloween costume time, Christmas present time, summer music festivals and outdoor events, and spring. Easter? And basically, I would make a gigantic batch at one time to stock up for three to four months. So buy all the supplies you need at once, then you have the receipt so you know exactly how much you spent on materials, then construct your batch. When I first started out on Etsy, I made six 
crowns. I actually used a lot of materials that were actually in the house from my mom from other projects, so I actually had very little overhead, which was probably why I never really calculated how much it was costing me anyways in the first place. So let's say I go out to the craft store and I buy $100 worth of supplies. Let's keep this math really easy. Out of all those supplies, I constructed 10 donut crowns. Divide your cost of supplies by how many products you yielded from that one batch of supplies, and you get $10 per donut crown. That is your raw materials cost. On top of that, you calculate time, like I had not done, shipping supplies, and the fees that come with Etsy. For Etsy, the listing fee for each item, meaning the fee that you will be charged every time you upload a listing onto the website, is 20 cents. And for the transaction fees, meaning whenever one of your items is sold, it will cost you 5% of the overall price of your item. To calculate a kind of estimate of your time, one thing that you can do is take your regular job or a job that you have as a freelancer. I am a freelancer. Kind of think about how much I charge an hour, which I know how much I charge an hour. And then I try to estimate that into how many hours I spend doing something. You can use a running clock app. I use one that's called Time Edition. I use it for my graphic design freelancing, but I can also calculate it by starting it as soon as I start working on my craft. Or you can set aside a certain amount of time per day, say four hours after work, and then you can kind of count up those days and make sure to stick to a strict schedule so you know exactly how much time this is taking you. Your time, your fees, and your costs will be all added up to give you a basis on how much each unit costs you. And then from that, you try to estimate how much you think somebody would spend on your specific product while making sure that you do not undercut yourself. When I did get angry figuring out how much time these things took me compared to how much I was actually charging. I kept coming back to the idea that I wasn't sure if it mattered anyways because I, I wasn't really sure how many people were going to be spending $50, $100 on a donut, uh, a plush donut. Um, I know that some people would pay a lot for a very special event and this is a very unique product. At the same time, I wanted it to be accessible for everybody. So... I guess I just ate it, <laughs> but not the donut products because they're not edible. <laughs> After you have your product, the number two responsibility that you have is developing your branding. I actually like to think that a lot of people on Etsy are rather good at this because a lot of them are artists to begin with. Developing a theme or a style or an aesthetic and sticking with it so that not only are your products very recognizable, but you as an entire store are being recognized whenever somebody comes across you on the internet. I'm a graphic designer, so I was able to design and create all of the logos, banners, and other social media content that went along with advertising my products and making my branding. I went with this cross between cute and creepy because I do kind of split my store down the middle in selling creepy monster art as well as cute donut stuff. But in my opinion, they kind of both like fall under the umbrella of being kind of childlike, kawaii, and I try to match my branding to those dual parts of my personality. The number three responsibility that you have is photos and listings. So going along with branding, once you have your products, once you have your logos, your name, and all of the things that point to your aesthetic, now you have to photograph and list your items. Etsy is all about telling you to take good photos because it's incredibly important. When somebody doesn't know about your store at all, but they're looking for a specific kind of product, they're going to be searching thousands of not only items but pages on Etsy to find yours and it has to stand out. In my opinion, clarity, consistency, and high quality, almost had three C's, are the key aspects of having a good photo for Etsy. As people are scrolling, you want to firstly make sure that people can very quickly and easily recognize the item in the photo. 
photographing your items against a non-busy background is usually the way to go. That doesn't mean that they have to be a completely white or black background. People have gotten very creative on how to create a individual style. This also can be helped by a nice shallow depth of field lens on a camera that makes everything in the background blurry, giving it a nice photographic feel. High quality, I think, is pretty self-explanatory. You want to have a photo that's not blurry, not low resolution. To be honest, most phones these days create incredibly high quality photos, and if you want more of that photographic feel, chalk a couple bucks up to an old DSLR like I have. And finally, what word did I use? Consistency. <laughs> Having a consistent background or a consistent style of photos will make sure that people recognize your items when they see them from your store. And when they are looking at your store as a whole, it's going to just look very neat, very branded, and very professional. When it comes to listings, a good rule of thumb and a good tip that Etsy gives you as well is to literally write as much relevant information as possible. Listing materials, size, accessories included, uses, as well as a fun and attractive description will help your item to stand out and will also help people when they're trying to figure out what they might be able to do with this item, where they might be able to take this item. Next, when you're considering running an Etsy store, you also have to think of making time to ship your items and communicate with customers. And along with just shipping the items, another aspect that a lot of new sellers don't automatically think of is all the customer relations that they're going to have to do because they now have a store. There's an entire desk at Walmart for people complaining or returning things and workers that answer general questions. Especially on Etsy, where customization is a huge part of the service, you have to be on your email game, constantly checking to make sure that everybody's questions are answered or all of the disputes are settled. And finally, the fifth responsibility or aspect of having an Etsy store is advertising and social media. This is, again, something else I touched upon on how to sell more of your art. A lot of artists that I've known kind of reject the idea that they have to advertise or constantly be on social media hawking their stuff. But in my own personal opinion, take it as you will. I don't understand how anyone, artist, general, sole proprietor of any kind of business, expects to have a successful service when nobody knows about the service in the first place. I feel that I'm lucky because I was educated in marketing during college and it's a passion of mine to try to figure out the best ways to get my products in front of people. But I do believe it is imperative for anybody who's selling anything online to keep up with social media, use the hashtags, learn how every single social media platform works and advertise to the best of their ability. In this day and age, before the internet does collapse and be taken over by the government, which is the day that I think I'll probably die, a lot of advertising is free if you can figure out little ways to do it. Again, if you haven't right-clicked and watched that previous episode, I do give you a couple hints on how to sneak your advertising in to get it under people's noses and find new customers. Did I miss anything? Is there anything about having an Etsy store that you can think of that I didn't mention to tell all those people out there who have no idea what goes into having a creative art shop? Click that thumbs up button so that one day I'll be rewatching my video and I'll go, oh, people like this, I'll make more of it. And if you don't wanna miss that video, make sure to press that red, s red sub button. Red blah, blah. This is my outro. What did you guys think about that? <laughs> that was my best idea so far about an outro for 2020. Um, get, do you get it? Like, this is Jess Paul. This is my outro. I really wanted to think of a way that was on brand that helped me end the video without rambling on for like 12 minutes trying to end the video. Um, again, I'm still open to suggestions. If anybody has an idea about what I should say to end every video quickly and efficiently. I'm all about efficiency, but I'm sure at this point I have put some, uh, some videos around my head, which you can now watch if you are aching for more, if you are hungry for more Jess Paul. Um, I'm right now, I'm probably going to say this in every video, I'm currently uh, on set of a movie and I've stacked these up, but I hope the world didn't implode by January 2020. I guess if it did, nobody's gonna be watching YouTube videos because I'm in the past right now. Um, but, uh, yeah. Wow, I rambled anyways. <laughs> <laughs>
Bye. This is my outro. Bye.